Hi there, I'm just back from a six and a half mile run this morning and uh, I'm pretty pretty worn out from it. The um, reason I'm doing this is that I want to raise money for Crohn's and Colitis UK. Uh, Imogen suffers from ulcerative colitis and has done since she was nine. Um, it's not a nice condition to have. Um, it causes inflammation of the colon, uh, ulcers on the colon and bleeding. Um, and it's not pleasant. And you can imagine that for a, a nine-year-old having that diagnosis, that's quite a big thing to, to come to terms with. And, and she was quite lucky because the first 18 months she was in remission. Um, and, and we didn't really have to deal with it. And, and we sort of remember the consultant saying, you know, two years without a, a flare-up is good. Um, and I think that sort of plagued on, on her mind. Uh, and we'd reached the two year anniversary uh, and that's when the non-epileptic attacks started. So um, not long after that, another flare up started. And to be honest, in the last two years, she's rarely been clear of having the bleeds. Um, it's just been more or less under control. Um, and when it's less under control, she is you know, fatigued. She's bleeding a lot. She needs a toilet a lot. Um, and it causes her a lot of anxiety and, and that's a big thing for a, a teenager to come to terms with. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing actually is the anxiety of how to deal with this condition that she's got to learn to live with. Uh, unfortunately, there is no cure. Um, you know, and it, it affects every walk of life for her. It means that at any point in time, she needs to know where the nearest toilet is because she could need to go at the drop of a hat. Um, and it's not like you or I where we go, oh, we need the toilet, you know, where's the nearest one? I've got a couple of minutes to get there. It's not a problem for Imogen. It's like, I need to go and I need to go now. And so everywhere we go, you know, she's scoping out and we are as her parents scoping out, you know, where's the nearest public toilets? Where can she go if needed? You know, or, you know, she's going to use her can't wait card and will the shop allow it? And, you know, you may have seen on, on social media and, and online recently the, the story about white stuff where, you know, uh, unfortunately, a, a, a worker there wasn't aware of the can't wait card and how to use it. Um, and so following the policies, you know, and there's nothing uh, against that person. You know, Imogen wasn't allowed to use a toilet and she got caught short on the way to the nearest public toilets. Now, out of that, some really good publicity has come out of the can't wait card. Um, and white stuff has certainly done some good work as well around it. So, you know, that's the reason that I'm running Ragnar Re Relay in three weeks time. Um, is to raise money for this great charity that's dear to our hearts, Crohn's and Colitis UK. Um, partly around research, but partly around support as well. And, and for Imogen, it's that support that's really key for her. Um, meeting other young children with this disease and how they cope with it, you know, and they all have different flare-ups at different times, it affects them slightly differently. You know, and the different age ranges as well. You know, we, we've met children as young as seven who've been diagnosed with it. Um, an image and spoken to, to young adults who have dealt with it through school, college, university and into their first jobs and, and learn to, to cope with it and deal with it. And for Imogen, that's almost a, um, the biggest benefit out of the Crohn's and colitis, the, the local support groups. Um, and, and we've got a fantastic hospital uh, at Southampton General and the team there, the paediatric gastro team, are fantastic in their research and their knowledge and understanding and support of um, the, the young sufferers of, of this disease. So, you know, we, we're really lucky where we live and the support we have, but, you know, that, that is key for the people uh, and the young children. So that's why I'm running Ragnar. It's a 170 mile relay race around uh, the Kent and West Sussex coasts. A uh, team of 10 of us will be uh, doing it. Um, and within that, I run three legs. So I run legs 9, 19, and 29. Uh, the first two are about 7.8 miles each and the last one's three miles each. So having just done a six and a half mile run this morning, uh, I've got a little way to go. Um, and, and it's not so much the distance, but it's the fact that those legs are going to be about eight hours apart. So having just got home now at uh, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, um, the, the thought of, of going out for another run this evening at six o'clock is quite daunting. But, um, you know, that's what I'm going to be challenging myself to do in three weeks' time. So really, if you can sponsor me any amount, it would be really appreciated. Uh, it will and does spur me on. So I'm running around thinking about, you know, the, the help that I can provide this charity uh, and other young sufferers like the Imogen. So please help donate some money via 
Virgin Money Giving for Richard Bryant. Um, and you know, thank you, thank you very much.